so yes let me just check so yes am i audible is the screen clear so that we can start the session so hello everyone am i audible okay just let me just check okay yes i am audible everything is okay we can start the session now yeah so yes my dear aspirants so uh, this is the anatomy mcq quiz session 1 so two sessions i will take today and tomorrow also in the afternoon 1 pm the another session of fmg june session 2022 quiz uh, will be conducted okay so before starting the session let me tell you about myself myself dr mona liza and i have done my md anatomy from armed force medical college pune and i am here to discuss the anatomy mcqs related and targeting the fmg 22 session so today this session will be not so um, elaborate i will just complete in another 40 minutes but tomorrow session we will have a uh, as much as mcqs i can solve in that session so let's talk about the special class features the important features of special class what are the benefits of joining free sessions on the anacademy platform the benefits are it's an interactive session where the learners can interact polls are conducted among the learners raise your hands and get your doubts clear write itself in the session never ever miss a session now once the session is finished you can also download the pdf notes anytime anywhere read from the top educators of anacademy platform these are the benefits of being the part of free special session and if you have not attended the session till now on the anacademy platform it is the time to attend the live sessions of anacademy where you get all important informations and you can also download the pdf notes anytime anywhere read from the top educators of anacademy platform that is highly beneficial for you so my dear aspirants i would also like to tell that what you can do you can download the app you can find uh, you can uh, find your goal as neat pg and thereafter you uh, via the link provided in the telegram group you can uh, reach live for the session and interact with me the users using the platform for the first time after downloading the app they should use the unlock code and act it now let me give you information regarding a session so regarding the session high yield anatomy mcq session neat pg 22 targeting neat pg 22 examination So yes, if we are uh, talking about high yield anatomy MCQ series, so this is highly beneficial, and uh, the session will be taken in the Sunday. Sunday I will take high yield anatomy MCQ series. So those who are present should join live for this session. Highly beneficial. Use the code ANAT and to get ten percent discount in uh, being the part of this session. now i would also like to share the free uh, test calendar for medical pg students so that they can be present live for the session ah, okay you they can enroll in the test by using the code anat10 they can enroll in the test by using the code anat10 and on 30th jan uh, 9 uh, am we have got fmg 22 grand series test 1 now now let's talk about the plus subscription of anacademy where all 19 subjects are completed in a very systematic way you can study from top educators of anacademy platform okay thank you foxen and what i tell everyone that tomorrow i will take a elaborate session of fmg mcq session so you all present live on the youtube only i will take that session that will be highly beneficial compete in live test and quiz study on the device of your choice assess more than 25000 mcqs and soon you will be provided with the printed notes of anacademy now let's talk about the iconic subscription where the anacademy and prep ladder is merged okay and you can study from the top educators of anacademy platform you can be the part of clinical integrated sessions uh, essentials video lectures from dream team q bank 3 active guidance rapid revision snaps or treasure dream notes 2021 all these benefits will be acquired by you so just go for iconic subscription okay and you with using the code anat and you get additional discount of 10% congratulations to the topper of fmg december session 2021 okay Mm, so i'm very very happy to share their images with you i wish them best of luck so that they can target their neat pg exam in the first go so the, let's see this slide where the pricing detail of plus and iconic has been done this is highly beneficial use this code as an unlock code i would also like to tell you about highly updated q bank 3 just get enrolled by using the code anat10 and get 10% discount focus fmg uh, the summer 22 comprehensive batch and target neat pg 22 batch and this is the code which can be used by you now identify the nerve zone in the diagram identify the nerve supply of the marked structure identify the nerve supply of marked structure what is the answer dear 
so this will be a quick session but again i will take uh, tomorrow continuation of this session where we will complete more of mcqs okay so please uh, uh, forgive me but today today i will take a quick session only we will again meet tomorrow okay the correct answer is median nerve why which muscle is this my dear aspirant which muscle is this identify the nerve supply of marked structure actually this is the first lumbrical muscle this is the first lumbrical muscle okay this is the first lumbrical muscle okay this is the first lumbrical muscle and actually first and second lumbrical first and second lumbrical as you know is getting innervation from median nerve okay first and second lumbrical muscles get innervations from median nerve actually this muscle actually you can see the tendon of fdp these are the tendons of these are the tendons of fdp and from the tendon of fdp the muscle arising is earthworm like muscle is the lumbrical muscle and we know that first and second lumbrical muscle innervation is median nerve and third and fourth lumbrical muscle innervation is ulnar nerve okay so please note down radial nerve is the innervation for the extensor compartment radial nerve okay how to identify see here it's very easy dear it's very easy let me show you okay so yes how to identify i will tell you so yes what you can see this is the lumbrical muscle okay these are the lumbrical muscles actually these are muscles which is deeply situated and the tendons which you are seeing the tendons which you are seeing here the tendons which you are seeing are the tendon of fdp so these are small earthworm like muscles these are very small muscle it is lumbrical kyo bolte because it is looking like an earthworm small muscle and these are the muscle which will be attached to the tendon of fdp these muscle is getting origin from the flexor digitorum profundus muscle and these small earthworm like muscle is the lumbrical muscle it is important that you should know the nerve supply of lumbrical muscle so see here when we are talking about nerve supply please have a look because this is very important for your mcq that radial nerve is is a nerve supplying extensor muscle radial nerve is the is for, is giving innervation to extensor compartment muscle median nerve is giving innervation to first and second lumbrical and ulnar nerve is giving innervation to third and fourth lumbrical muscle if we talk about anterior introsius nerve anterior introsius nerve is a deep branch of median nerve it's a deep branch of median nerve and it is giving innervation to fdp flexor digitorum profundus lateral half flexor pollicis longus and pronator quadratus see here it is giving innervation to deep muscle so please note down anterior introsius nerve is a deep branch of median nerve and it is supplying three deeper muscle lateral part of fdp flexor digitorum profundus flexor pollicis longus and pronator quadratus so this um, this chart is very important for the innervation and please by heart this this is very important for solving the mcqs let's move on to the second one palatine tonsil develop from which of the following pouches palatine tonsil develop from which of the following pharyngeal pouches first second third or fourth <clears throat> okay can i give the answer i will just wait for few seconds and then i will come up with the explanation palatine uh, tonsil develop from which of the following pouches whether it is first second third or fourth the correct answer is second pouch the second uh, second palatine uh, second pouch is the correct answer pharyngeal pouch so see this diagram where you can see uh, this is the pouch on one side there is pouch and one side there is a cleft okay so the question is asked about the pharyngeal pouch okay the question is asked about pouch not about the cleft so see here when we are talking about pouch so see here uh from the first pouch auditory tube is arising part of tim, uh, also the primary tympanic cavity from the second pouch this was asked in the mcq palatine tonsil as a, uh, uh, from the second pouch palatine tonsil from the third pouch you can see here inferior parathyroid gland and thymus gland inferior parathyroid gland and thymus gland arise and from the fourth pouch superior parathyroid gland and ultimo bronchial body So is it okay? 
So clearly it is seen that palatine tonsil developed from the second pharyngeal pouch. Okay, all of the following are example of ball and socket joint except. All of the following are example of ball and socket joint except. Please mark the correct answer. So, due to some MO, so we will also connect tomorrow, okay. All of the following are example of ball and socket joint except. Arti Pal was correct. Malice and incus. Malice and incus articulation is an example of saddle type of articulation. It's an example of saddle. Nizam Khan absolutely right. It is an example of saddle type of articulation. Malice and incus joint is an example of saddle type of articulation. Rest all are example of ball and socket. Rest all are example of ball and socket type of synovial joint. Rest all are example of ball and socket type of synovial joint. Got it everyone? See here. So in this diagram, you can see the articulation between the malus and incus bone. They are the ear ossicles. It's an example of saddle type of articulation, but the articulation between the long process of the incus and that of the foot plate of staves. This is an articulation, which is an example of ball and socket type of synovial joint. Okay. Now, also the articulation between talocalcaneo navicular. So this bone is the navicular. These are tarsal bone. This is navicular. This is the talus bone and this is the anterior part of the calcaneum. So anterior talocalcaneum calcaneo navicular joint. The anterior articulation between the talus bone, the calcaneum bone that is the heel bone, heel bone and that of the navicular bone is an example of ball and socket type of synovial joint. But if you will see the subtalar joint, the subtalar joint is a posterior articulation. This is the posterior articulation between, this is the posterior articulation between talus and calcaneum. So the articulation between talus and calcaneum posteriorly is called subtalar joint and it is an example of plain type of synovial joint. Plain type of synovial joint. Got it? Okay, let's move on to the next. Okay, epithelium lining of prostate gland. What is the epithelium lining of prostate gland? What is the epithelium lining of prostate gland? Whether it is a, a stratified squamous epithelium, stratified columnar, transitional or stratified squamous epithelium. Epithelium lining of prostatic urethra. Me, uh, prostatic urethra. So I will continue this session also, we will continue this session tomorrow also, don't worry. Continue the session tomorrow at 1 p.m. So I will continue this session also tomorrow at 1 p.m. So I have to uh, just uh, wrap it now. But don't worry, we will continue this session tomorrow itself. Just give me the answer of this prostatic urethra lining epithelium. So my dear aspirants, so I have just done a quick session because I wanted that you were waiting. So I should be present live. But I will again be in continuing this session tomorrow also. I have taken one of the session today that is 3 p.m. That is head and neck MCQ. So all of you just go through that head and neck MCQ. Uh, session of let's crack neat pg also here the lining epithelium prostatic urethra the correct answer is transitional epithelium here the correct answer will be transitional epithelium the correct answer is transitional epithelium okay see here Okay, prostatic, pre-prostatic urethra is lined by transitional epithelium. When we are talking about prostatic and pre-prostatic urethra, it is lined by transitional epithelium. Membranous part of urethra is lined by pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. It is lined by pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. 
we know that the male urethra has got different parts it is having prostatic part it is having pre prostatic part it is having bulbar and menile part the bulbar and penile segment is having the lining epithelium pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and the navicular fossa is having the lining epithelium of stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium please note down the skin around and the more terminal part of urethra at the level of glans penis when we are talking about the part of glans penis it is having the lining epithelium similar as the skin so here the lining epithelium will be stratified squamous keratinized epithelium at the level of glans penis navicular fossa stratified squamous non keratinized bulbar and penile segments pseudo stratified columnar epithelium membranous part pseudo stratified prostatic pre prostatic transitional what has been asked in the mcq prostatic part of urethra so clearly the prostatic urethra is having the lining epithelium of transitional epithelium is having transitional epithelium as the lining epithelium got it everyone quickly let's move on to question number 5 which of the following cardiac vein do not drains into coronary sinus which of the following cardiac vein do not drains into coronary sinus which of the following cardiac vein do not drains into coronary sinus directly most correct answer question number 5 please mark the correct answer which of the following cardiac vein do not drains into coronary sinus Yes, Arthi Pal, you are absolutely correct. Urinary bladder, pelvic ureter, proximal part of urethra. Yes, Arthi, you are absolutely correct. Yes, Arthi, Arthi, you are absolutely correct. Yes, absolutely correct, dear Arthi. Yes, Arthi is perfectly correct. Nizam is telling it's V. Yes, Nizam, you have given absolutely correct answer. Nizam Khan is absolutely right. Vena cordis minimi is not uh, uh, opening into coronary sinus. It is directly opening into the right atrium. rest all opens into coronary sinus now see here venous drainage uh, so venous drainage or uh, if we talk about venous drainage see here uh, oblique vein anterior cardiac vein also posterior vein of left ventricle middle cardiac vein and small cardiac vein and great cardiac vein all is opening into so here you can see here all these are opening into the coronary sinus but anterior cardiac vein is opening not directly into coronary sinus anterior cardiac vein is directly so exception is anterior cardiac vein and the other is vena cordis minimi vena cordis minimi so all these are not directly opening into coronary sinus but they are opening directly into the right arterial chamber right atrium okay see here middle cardiac vein drain into coronary sinus vena cordis minimi anterior cardiac vein drains into right atrium this is important for mcq small cardiac vein is a tributary of coronary sinus oblique vein is also a tributary of coronary sinus so with this explanation it is quite clear that only the anterior cardiac vein and that of uh, small uh, that is the vena cordis minimi only the vena cordis minimi and anterior cardiac vein is opening into right atrium rest all open into the right atrium via coronary sinus via coronary sinus got it great cardiac vein so i just want you to know the location of three important vein which is important for mcq location of great cardiac vein location of middle cardiac vein location of small cardiac vein important for mcq great cardiac vein is located in anterior interventricular groove great cardiac vein is located in anterior interventricular groove middle cardiac vein is located in posterior interventricular groove and small cardiac vein is located along arterioventricular groove that is exactly lying between right atrium and the right ventricle so all of you follow your mcq session for your fmg examination please note down the location of great cardiac vein middle cardiac vein and small cardiac vein got it everyone so this session i will quickly uh, uh, finish the session but this session 
uh, tomorrow i will take a session approximately of 2 hours is it okay if I, uh, please let me know i will take approximately 2 hour session in which i will continue this session with more of mcqs more than 30 40 mcqs very important fmg mcqs we will discuss so that is the plan okay so see here here the location of small cardiac vein in atrio ventricular groove is shown as you can see and the great cardiac vein in the anterior interventricular groove got it and here you can see the coronary sinus here you can see posterior interventricular artery is there along with it the middle cardiac vein lies posterior interventricular groove the middle cardiac vein is running in the posterior interventricular groove along with the posterior interventricular artery now moving on to the next mcq identify the type of fibers in the arrow mark structure identify the type of fibers in the arrow mark structure question number 6 so can you see arrow marked fibers are there so actually the mcq is asking about uh, this fibers this fibers you have to identify this fibers what are these fibers what are these fibers whether it is commissural fibers long association short association or projection fibers what is the correct answer your time starts now uh the correct answer is projection fibers actually this is internal capsule the arrow mark structure is internal capsule and we know that uh, there are three types of commissural uh, there are three types of white fibers in case of cerebral hemisphere so you can understand this fibers by seeing this diagram see here if i enlarge this diagram you can see the fibers which is connecting right half of the brain with the left half of the brain see here it is connecting right and the left cerebral hemisphere so it is connecting here you can see the right um, and the left cerebral hemispheres are connected so they are inter that means commissural fibers are interhemispheric now association fibers means these association fibers means inside inside the cerebral hemisphere they are connecting the adjacent areas of cerebral hemisphere means they are not crossing one cerebral hemisphere to other but they are lying inside the one cerebral hemisphere so they are intra hemispheric they are intra hemispheric now the question is of projection fibers can you see the pink color fibers are projection fibers they are connecting cortical area to that of subcortical area they are long they are connecting cortical area to subcortical area and the most important example of projection fibers is internal capsule internal capsule internal capsule is the most important so most uh, important example of uh, projection fibers is internal capsule see here so this was exactly the diagram and here this was asked this fibers has been asked this is a coronal section of the brain so this is the coronal section of the brain coronal section of the brain and the fibers which has been asked you to identify was this so here you can clearly see the fibers which you can clearly identify in this diagram this fibers are internal capsule these fibers are internal capsule and internal capsule as i told you is an example of is an example of projection fibers this is connecting cortex area with the subcortex area see here again you can see this part this is corpus callosum this is corpus this fibers are uh, corpus callosum and corpus callosum is the part of which fibers they are the part of commissural fibers commissural fibers so is it clear so in this diagram we have to choose one answer we will go exactly with the answer that is internal capsule in this diagram the arrow marked fibers which has been shown is internal capsule and we know that internal capsule is an example of projection fibers projection fibers okay so and here you can also see you can correlate with that that it is having medially thalamus t4 thalamus and laterally it will be having lentiform nucleus okay L for lentiform nucleus and T is the thalamus. T for thalamus. So internal capsule is having thalamus and lentiform nucleus. Lentiform nucleus laterally, thalamus medially, and also caudate nucleus is medially. Caudate nucleus is medially. So caudate nucleus will lie medially, and thalamus will also lie medially, but lentiform nucleus will lie laterally. 
so let's move on to the next question number 7th paralysis of paralysis of third fourth sixth nerve with the involvement of ophthalmic division of fifth nerve localizes the lesion to which of the following structure localizes the lesions of cavernous sinus apex of orbit brain stem or base of skull paralysis of third fourth sixth nerve with the involvement of ophthalmic division of fifth nerve localizes the lesion cavernous sinus yes aditya singh absolutely right cavernous sinus is absolutely correct yes cavernous sinus is absolutely correct answer so actually we know that in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus we have got third cranial nerve related we have got fourth cranial nerve related we have got ophthalmic division of trigeminal or fifth cranial nerve related and throw it inside when through inside or through or it sixth cranial nerve passes also maxillary nerve is related let me show you so this is the diagram and if i highlight this diagram so you can see so let me just highlight this diagram so you can clearly see the nerve related are these are the nerves which is related in the lateral wall so in the lateral wall we have got four nerves related the nerves are oculomotor trochlear ophthalmic and maxillary lower down inside which is passing through and through can you see this nerve this nerve is abducens nerve which is passing inside passing through inside th along with internal carotid artery along with internal carotid artery okay very good aditya singh very good so aditya singh has also giving the explanation how the involvement occurs okay so yes trigeminal paresthesia in cavernous sinus thrombosis and not orbital cellulitis or okay, differentiating also the nerve involvement is gradual as you can see here while in orbital cellulitis it is concurrent okay very good thank you aditya for your uh, sharing your knowledge yes absolutely correct okay so yes let's move on to the next that is question number 8 which of the following nerve is not a branch of lumbar plexus which of the following nerve is not a branch of lumbar plexus obturator nerve genito femoral nerve pudendal nerve lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh absolutely correct aditya so yes pudendal nerve what is the root value s2 s3 and l4 it is formed by sacral plexus it is formed by the ventral rami of s2 s3 and s4 it is not formed by the lumbar plexus okay other than that all are the branches of lumbar plexus which is getting major contribution from lumbar plexus is formed by l1 l2 l3 and l4 so see here here branches of lumbar plexus is hypogastric ilio hypogastric ilio inguinal genito femoral lateral femoral cutaneous nerve femoral nerve accessory obturator and obturator nerve so clearly you can see actually pudendal nerve is not a branch of lumbar plexus it's branch from sacral plexus it's a having the root value s2 s3 and s4 so we have got uh, uh, c as the correct answer it's not a branch from lumbar plexus let's move on to question number 9th retro retro mammary space is located between which of the following structure retro mammary space yes dear why not aditya singh yes first year students would definitely from the first year only you have to uh, get prepared for the next exam okay so anatomy mcqs will be best understood and explained by the first year students because they are freshly read it wo freshly anatomy read it kiya hai they have just gone through the anatomy subject so it is very fresh in their mind and you have to appear for next so definitely you should solve yes uh, it's the deep pectoral fascia and the breast absolutely correct so exactly the space between the mammary gland and deep pectoral fascia is retro mammary space which is utilized for placing a uh, breast implant in case of total uh, breast removal or in case of mastectomy which has been radical mastectomy in case of breast cancers 
so i would like to show you this diagram so let me just highlight it so if i am highlighting this image you can see here this space is the retro memory space this space which you are seeing is the retro memory space okay this space is the retro memory space and this space is exactly between breast and between the fascia so pectoral fascia so i will use green color for this pectoral fascia so it is lying between the pectoral fascia and that of the breast okay identify the arrow mark nerve in the image identify the arrow mark nerve in the image so if i highlight it so so you can just have a see here i have highlighted it so you have to identify the arrow mark nerve please see this image i will wait for 30 seconds you can see this image arrow mark nerve now give me the answer which is the nerve which is the nerve long thoracic nerve nerve to subclavian dorsal scapular nerve or supra scapular nerve okay nizam khan has given the answer so let's move on with this so actually it is very important for your uh, fmg exam that you should know the identification of brachial plexus nerves and also the branches of it the correct answer is nerve to subclavius it is nerve to subclavius okay so let me show you the similar image and just highlighting this okay i'm uh, i'm just enlarging this image so that you can understand so see here in this diagram okay so here actually it is c5 it is c6 it is c7 c8 and t1 what is it this is the roots of brachial plexus from the roots it is giving two branch ds and this one is ltn what is ltn long thoracic nerve and ds so from the roots we have got two branches ds and ltn okay what does you mean by ds let me write it here ds means dorsal scapular nerve and ltn means long thoracic nerve long thoracic nerve now this is a uh, okay this is what ut upper trunk okay from upper trunk we have got two branches ss and ns so ns has been asked in the mcq so see here what do you mean by ss ss means supra scapular nerve and ns means nerve to subclavius nerve to subclavius got it now let's move nerve to subclavius is it okay it means nerve to subclavius now let's move on to the cords of brachial plexus so firstly i am talking about lateral cord so lateral cord branches are this is lpn lateral pectoral nerve this is musculo cutaneous nerve musculo cutaneous nerve this is lateral root of this nerve what is nerve mn means median nerve okay lpn means these are the branches of lateral cord okay these are the branches of lateral lpn means lateral pectoral nerve pectoral nerve so done with the branches of lateral cord let's move with the branches of posterior cord so now i am talking about which cord posterior cord which is formed by the posterior divisions of all the trunks posterior cord branches are this is an axillary nerve this is the biggest branch rn means radial nerve this is the radial nerve this is thoraco dorsal nerve this is lower subscapular ls and us okay what do you mean by us so i will write here see here us means us means upper subscapular upper subscapular what do you mean by ls lower subscapular lower subscapular what is ltn what is tdn thoraco dorsal nerve tdn means thoraco dorsal nerve thoraco dorsal nerve thoraco dorsal nerve got it everyone okay now branches of medial cord so when i am talking about branches of medial cord the branches are this is medial root of median nerve this is un for ulnar nerve and these this is medial pectoral nerve and this is the medial cutaneous nerve of arm and forearm medial cutaneous nerve of arm and forearm so done with all the identification so actually we have done so many times this so actually we have done so many times the identification of the nerves of brachial plexus so quickly i have 
yes you want a mnemonic why not see here the mnemonic so let's start with the branches so roots roots of brachial plexus two branches dorsal scapular nerve yes m for you absolutely correct dorsal scapular nerve and long thoracic nerve long thoracic nerve now upper trunk upper trunk how many branches two branches that is nerve to subclavius nerve to subclavius ns and suprascapular nerve ss suprascapular nerve now my dear aspens absolutely correct now let's talk about the branches of lateral cord lateral cord branches can be memorized by the mnemonic ml ml2 ml2 means medical leave 2 medical leave 2 so ml m for musculocutaneous nerve m for musculocutaneous nerve musculocutaneous nerve l for lateral pectoral nerve l for lateral root of median nerve lateral root of median nerve got it let's talk about the branches of medial cord branches of medial cord branches of medial cord m for u absolutely okay u for ulnar nerve m for medial pectoral nerve yes lunar ulnar absolutely correct uh, rahman absolutely correct then we have got medial root of median nerve medial root of median nerve medial cutaneous nerve of arm and forearm medial cutaneous nerve of arm and medial cutaneous nerve of forearm got it now what remains posterior cord what remains posterior cord so for posterior cord branches write down posterior cord and the branches of posterior cord you can use the mnemonic rats you can use the mnemonic rats rats in the upper and lower self rats in upper and that of lower self rats in the upper and lower self r for radial nerve a for axillary nerve t for thoracodorsal nerve which is also called as nerve to latissimus dorsi nerve to ld latissimus dorsi muscle s for upper self or lower self so ss upper self means upper subscapular nerve and lower means lower subscapular nerve lower subscapular nerve got it so we have done with this all the branches of posterior cord is it okay we have done with all the branches of posterior cord also so today I have done a quick session but tomorrow I will take an elaborate session of more than 2 hours where we will complete more than 30-40 most important MCQs how we can uh, cover many many MCQs targeting FMG examination. So before ending the session I would like to tell about high yield anatomy MCQ session which will be taken targeting for NEET PG 22 examination in the Sunday 30th Jan 1 pm 2 pm this is a special free session do present. It will be Aditya Singh, it will be a mixed bundle, it will be a clinical MCQs. It will be more of a clinical MCQs. Okay. So directly anatomy ke MCQs will be correlated with clinical history. And then you have to answer the answer. Uh, you have to give the answer. Okay. It will be related with a clinical note. So use this code to get enrolled and be present live for this session. This will be highly beneficial for you. Special class class uh, I have uh, all I am showing you this calendar where you can be present for now 30th Jan's grand free test. So this is my dear aspirants. This is targeting for FMG June session 2022 that is grand test which is occurring on 30th Jan that is 9 a.m. So get enrolled by using the code and at 10. So you get enrolled for this test. Yes, sure, we will have that session. Don't worry, Aditya Singh, sure, we will have that session. Okay, in the coming month, Feb, we will have the session. Okay, get enrolled for the free test on 30th January and at 10 is the code. This is the pricing detail which is shown for the NEET PG Iconic and that of plus subscription. Have a look on this. If you are planning to take the subscription, 
you can take the subscription and this is the whole comparison of the plus and iconic you can use my code and add 10 for getting 10 percent extra discount my dear aspirants i have to cover many many mcqs don't worry Aditya Singh, you can solve these all MCQs along with me and all other tomorrow highly important FMG sessions MCQs. Uh, so of uh, we will take that is second session. I will take a session of more than two hours, more than two hours. So do present 1 p.m. session tomorrow and we will cover up as much as an MCQ is possible. Okay. Thank you. Be studying. Thank you so much. We will again meet up with the next session. All the best. Keep studying. Okay, my dear aspirants. So we will meet uh, tomorrow exactly. Thank you. Thank you, my dear husbands. Thank you.